For all the guest stars that you've had, is there anyone that you still haven't gotten that you want to be in like one of your movies or? Hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds of people. And um, uh, yeah, there's, there's such a, an, an extensive list um, that I, I don't even know where to start. Uh, but we finally got Zach Levi, who Zach we've all known for years and years going to Nerd HQ. And, uh, and, and so Zach was like the first person uh, we went to. So it was like, we checked that off. We didn't get David Bowie in time. And uh, although I don't know if he ever really would have done the show, but, uh, but the one thing is, uh, that was the first thing I started. I, 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 I created the, the villain to be David Bowie in his weirdest phase, which I think is the Thin White Duke phase, which I never understood. So I thought, what a strange, creepy, and Levi is so good in this part. I can't, I can't wait for you to see him. Well, I can tell you everything, but... Could you tell us which episodes Oh my gosh, there's so many Easter eggs in this thing. There is... There, you've got to watch the pilot, because there's about three of them that play from the pilot. There is, um, there's a handful of episodes... Look at... It's easier for, for me to uh, make obscure references to episodes that I directed or wrote, because I remember all that stuff. But um, there, um, there are. I think you got to watch them all. <laughs> Many of those, and the ones that James directed. Um, there's a lot of really fun stuff. And you guys saw. Did you guys? Were you at the panel? No, we get to see the panel. Oh. We the uh, the half beard makes an appearance in the opening sequence, which was our favorite. Uh, which was our favorite thing. I don't know if you remember, but they had one beard that was their disguise, and so they had to, and they needed to get into the gun range, so they cut it in half, and then they each wore half of it, and they pretended to be carrying something in past the front desk, and so and so James has used that half beard a couple times, and right away, what episode is that? It has a gun range, and whatever the half beard made its first appearance. Oh my gosh, there's Soup Can Sam. Um, the, that was a character James brought out a couple times. I'm trying to think what else. Carlos Jacot appears in the movie, and Carlos was one of our writers who also appeared. Um, I think he holds the record now. He plays five. He's played five different characters on the show. He was in remake and uh, just one of the funniest, greatest guys uh, on our staff. I know you said you had ideas. You want to have five more movies in the future. Like that's a very specific ideas for what you'd like those movies to be. Oh my now. god, so many ideas, and uh, you know it was. I've been saying that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just this week that suddenly it became a thing. <laughs> so, and I mentioned it to Entertainment Weekly, and we, we'd done the, the phone interview, and suddenly, like, everybody's asking me about the five movies. I have to say, if you ever want to make six movies, just mention it, and it blows up on its own. So it's kind of like that, what was that thing, the, the secret, where if you want something, you just envision it. Just envision it. And, uh, but I do, I have lots of world, and I, I would like to you know, take these guys other places, uh, you know, because that's the fun of it. And the, and the fun of it, you know, we shot this in, in Vancouver again, but we were shooting in Vancouver in San Francisco, so it was still different, you know, and, and, and it felt fresh. And, and the, the best thing about the movie is, is it doesn't feel like it's two episodes of the show stuck together. It's, it feels like a movie. It is a movie. And it feels bigger, and, and the stakes are higher, and... You know, the danger is, is there's some like really serious stuff that happens, and yet it's the silliest stuff we've ever done and the funniest stuff that we've ever done. And, you know, we're, we're editing it, and I can't stop editing it because every day we find another little gem, and it's so fun. It's, it's, it's so good. I can't even begin to tell you. What scene are you most looking forward to fan seeing? Well, I, um, I really love... Oh, there's so many. There's so many, and without giving away something. With, I hope so. I hope we, you know, I don't know. Are, do they still do Blu-ray? Uh, We've never done Blu-ray for our show, but did they still do box sets? Because I'm trying to figure out, well, can we have a commentary track? I, I think that's important. As a fan, I would want to have that. Maybe I'll just record it on my voice memo on my phone. And... Uh, <laughs> And we'll do it, but uh, I would love to do something like that. And maybe we can, uh, maybe we can record our own. It's a good point. Um, you, you made a good, 
suggestion. We're going to put that out in the world, and maybe we get people excited and wanting. Because for me, I love doing the show. But one of my favorite parts of the year is when they were putting together the DVD box sets. They would go, okay, which two episodes do you want to do commentary for? And I would say, um, I want to do all 16 episodes. And they go, well, we can't do that. And I go, okay, I want to do 14. And then we would negotiate it. And they would, they would say, okay, we can do six. And I go, okay, great, six. How many hours is that? And it says, well, 15 minutes of between each one. And then you have to do lunch and break for lunch. And what, what I said is, all right, okay, that's, the, you know, that's five hours. What if we do them and run them back to back to back to back? And we would do that, and we'd end up getting one or two more in there by not taking breaks in between. So if you ever get the box sets and wondered if our voices seem like they're worn out or if we're exhausted, it's because that was the sixth one in a row that we recorded. Now but you've, it, you've talked a lot about you know doing some Easter eggs and throwbacks for all the fans for the movie. What's something new that fans would be? Oh excited? my gosh. There's so many new things, and that's the coolest thing. Is like before we ever put in a "this is my partner" or I, you know, I've heard it both ways, all that. I was like, "What's the new thing we're gonna say?" And what's the new? So we have like a whole slew of uh, of, of new running gags. The new psych office is so good. I actually wanted to live in that set for a couple days because and it also is an easter egg to something else that's happened i wish i could tell you all this stuff, but we have to keep a few things secret but there's the new psych office is great the new the the the, uh, the, the catchphrase that goes with the, uh with the new psych office is uh, lots of fun there's um there's a lot so many good bits it's the, i set out to do and, and james and i wrote wrote the script together but before I even sat down and pitched anything that I wanted to do to James. It was like, I want to pitch this show to the most die-hard fans, but also the person who's never seen it before. So if we, we do the little freeze frame cards that introduce each person um, and in, the, um, in the opening sequence, and that's important to me because if you've never seen the show, you don't know the fake psychic and what he means and what his best friend is, you can walk into this thing blindly and pick it up. And I think that's really important for people to be able to reactivate and go back and go, oh my God, there's 121 of these to, to go back and find. Because it's just, it, I think it works for everybody. It works for the most diehard. But there's stuff in there that happened that, like, I'm like, no one's going to get this. But let's, let's, br let's bring it back and see what happens. So there's a lot of great Easter eggs. But more than the great Easter eggs, there's new things that, that I hope that we've been repeating in the editing room that we hope other people will be repeating and, and find funny. What's your being a creator in this social media age where fans are like helping get these revivals kind of off the ground like, and you're so connected? What's that like for you? It's, it's so cool. And I think because we have such a special group of people because our show is about positivity and our show is about, you know, making the world a better place. And, you know, in, in dark times, um, you know, it's weird that so many dark, dark, shows happen because I always feel like well, that should be the time where fun stuff happens so you know we're about we're about saying something good about the world the world's a good place and everybody everybody has a place we you know and uh, in that in itself was was our desire to we, we were really early adapters I think to engaging social media because we felt like we wanted to be our own promo department in addition to the promo department that we have because USA has this incredible machine but they have a new show that comes out every year so they have to change their focus and, and put it more on that and then you're supposed to go on your own so we got into you know when when we had message boards from way back then and then and, and then getting on it every every time there was something else it was like all right how do we get to connect with our with our fans and it served us so well because, you know, right into the Twitter age, beyond to the next thing, that, it, that it's, it's been this sort of diehard base of people that, that we can stay engaged with who have just beaten the drum so loudly for this movie to happen. But, you know, without that, I don't think anyone would have, would have you know, no, no one would be calling me saying, hey, you want to do the movie this year? So it's, it's nice, and it's so great too to, to be able to engage people and find out what's important to them. Because when, when we sat down to write it, it's like, I know what I want, I know what James wants, I know what the actors want to do, but most importantly, what are our 
what are the fans wanting? Because that's an important part of the equation. It's also important not to give everybody exactly what they want right when they want it because you have nowhere to go. But I think if you can, uh, if you can sort of make sure everybody has a voice and everybody has a say, it, it feels not interactive, but it feels it, it feels like everybody everybody has has contributed to to the thing. And, um, how, how large a Because he, he is one of the few that stayed in Santa Barbara for the show. So, how big is the role? What, what was so, so you know, it, when the Tim thing happened, it was like we were like basically arriving in, uh, in Vancouver. And there was a lot of questions. The first question was, how is Tim? How is he doing? And once we knew that, oh my God, not only is he recovering, but he's. I'm so blown away by by that guy. It's a strength that I would never have had. And he's coming along so well. It's like, all right, we want to make sure we we'll make sure we put him in and we, and we put him in a meaningful moment, but we're not going to make him, you know, during this recovery process, fly up to Vancouver, go through, get a work permit and do all that stuff. So now that we're back and we're cutting, we're going to shoot Tim's thing here, but we've shot everything else that, that goes with it. So it was a matter of making an imp impactful moment. And when he's, when, when we're ready to do it, we put all the, the pieces together, we can then present it in the, in the best way. And it's this, the, the, the stuff, the Tim thing is just, it's so, it's great. It's, it's really cool. Okay, so of all of the references, all of the themed episodes, everything, one-liners, anything, what was your favorite thing to reference? Was it like the Hitchcock one that it's obvious, or was it like a one-liner that no one understood? <laughs> well, I'm very proud of the one-liners that no one understands. Yeah. I, I brought one up today that's in the movie. And uh, I also have, we, we have jokes, we have jokes that we, we think three people will get, but you, the trick is don't frame them as jokes, just roll right over them, and then someone goes, oh my God, do you know what that is? Those are, those are always the sweetest for us when someone gets it. But in terms of genre, I mean, obviously Twin Peaks was, uh, we take full credit for Twin Peaks coming back. Uh, but personally for me, uh, I, I might have had, on the series, I might have had the most fun when we did the London episode and we did the Guy Ritchie thing, just because it was, it was a great chance to uh, to sort of step into that genre. But it's like those, we never fully engage. And that was important too, to me, you know, people were like, what genre is the movie gonna be? And I said, the movie can't be a genre because for two hours you can't, you can't just make it a, an homage to something. So it has to be a, it has to live and, and, and breathe on its own. And so there's, we take detours in the genre, of course, but uh, but it but it's the genre is two hour action movie. It's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>